Hello, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at how to do meal planning. So if you haven't followed me already, I do videos all about minimalism, decluttering and my no spend cheer and I try and do lots of things to help make it easier financially and to have a calmer, more simple way of life. So if you want to see more videos like this then don't forget to subscribe down below and press the bell for notifications. So how do you meal plan? I do talk about meal planning quite a lot. It's something that I refer to as an easy way of saving money because there are so many benefits to it. So let's just talk about meal planning and how it helps. If you meal plan you get into the habit of using up ingredients that you already have. You only tend to buy what you actually need for the meals that you've planned and you're also forward planning as well, making meals um, by batch cooking and then you take the pressure off future weeks that you have coming up because you can use some of those meals that you've already cooked. So it's a way of utilising your ingredients, making sure you don't have as much wastage and having um, healthy meals as well because you're planning that health aspect into your life. And batch cooking is going to be a really good way of saving money on electric and gas as well because you're not going to be using the oven as many times because you're making a meal that can last maybe two or three days of meals in one go so you're not using the oven three times or the hob three times or the microwave three times etc to cook so you're then only reheating so that's a lot less usage overall than having 30 minutes of a meal cooked uh, three times so it's definitely worth considering doing and it doesn't have to be a, a fixed thing. You can plan your meals for the seven days but you don't have to have them on certain days of the week. And when you get into habit of batch cooking, what you can do then is use those batch cooked meals as an easy meal option if you're feeling like you don't want to cook that day. So it gives you that flexibility without having the added pressure. So let me talk you through my process of how I meal plan and use that to my advantage. So the first thing that I do is I take a stock of everything that I've got in my fridge, my freezer and my store cupboard. Having that list of those three areas helps me to know exactly what ingredients I already have, what ones I might need to use up left over from the fridge or freezer and it allows me to know exactly where I am. So I use that as an opportunity to know which batch cooked meals I've still got that I can eat as part of my meal plan and which ones I could make. So once I've had that all, all that information I go on to point number two. So number two is to create a plan of meals using up existing ingredients or existing batch cooked meals. So I tend to plan seven days at a time but you could plan two weeks, you could plan a month, it's up to you whatever works best for you but I find that having a weekly turnover allows me to vary things each week and account for different changes or events that happen. So it just means that I have that flexibility. So for example, when I'm creating existing meals, I might know that I've got a certain amount of meat or a certain amount of veg, and I could come up with meals that have most of the ingredients that I've already got, and then maybe I would only need to buy maybe a couple of ingredients to do that. And then point number three then is to plan in some batch cooking. So it might not be that you want to batch cook every time you cook, it might be that once a week you do a batch cook of a meal so that you have another two meals worth in that batch cook. So one that you can eat, two that you could freeze, so that you have those flexibilities for future weeks when you meal plan the next week. Once you've done that you then move on to number four which is creating a shopping list of those additional ingredients that you then need to finish off making those meals. So that tends to reduce the amount that you need because you've utilised everything that you've already got so far and you've just then decided on the extra little ingredients that you need to finish that meal and to be able to make it. And then number five is to make sure you then stick to that shopping list and stick to roughly that meal plan. So when you go shopping you've got that list of things that you need and it shouldn't be as many because you've already allocated stuff that you already have and then your shopping list will be much shorter, much easier and quicker to get, and then you are ready to go. The same goes for the plan that you have for your meal plan. If you've planned out seven days of meals, you need to utilise those seven meals within the week. So it doesn't matter which order you do it, depending on the fresh produce, for example, you may want to use up 
the salad and veg earlier in the week or do your batch cooking earlier in the week so that you have more flexibility for the end of the week. So it's about utilising the ingredients in the best way but there's no fixed order that you have to do your meals. They are roughly the meals that you're going to have over the seven days. I tend to plan in quicker and easier meals on the days that I know I have meetings after school so that I know that there's no pressure when I come home. That will be our pizza night and I can just put the pizzas in the oven, done. So I use that to my advantage and you could do something similar if you know that you always want to have a roast then you'll have a roast on Sunday for example because you know you've got time but you may not have that option during the week. So it's about utilising things in the way that works for you. So as I say, meal planning has huge benefits. If you can batch cook, you're going to save yourself money on electric and ingredients because you can add lots of filler ingredients like lentils and things like that into meals to bulk it out and things like that. Um, you're also going to save money by only using the stuff that you actually need when you go shopping, only buying the things that you need for the meals. So you're not buying extra little snacky things that you don't really need. So you can plan snacks into your meal plan, you can plan it in lunches. I tend to get in the habit of having a kind of fixed set selection of lunches. So I will batch cook soup and soup will be a lunch. I will batch cook jacket potatoes in advance and then I just add the toppings um, when I use them. And I also do enchiladas. So they're my three like go-to lunches because I always like to have a cooked lunch to give me enough energy for the afternoon. I'm not quite so cooked lunchy when I'm at home, although I probably would go to a jacket potato or like cheese toasty where I've got a bit more flexibility of time. Um, but generally I have the same kind of run of lunches, so it makes it a lot easier to plan. So I always know I need to have my gluten-free wraps and my meat and the veg that goes in the enchiladas. So it makes it a lot easier to plan. I'm not one for sandwiches, etc. So it just means that I know that I've got a really good meal for lunch to go and snacks I tend to go with fruit or basic crisps or something like that so snack wise I don't tend to deviate from that either so it really means that going food shopping is a real quick job it takes 20 minutes maximum to go around the store and then I know that I don't have much to organise with that either so hopefully you've enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did and I will be back for more videos on decluttering, minimalism and my no spend year. Take care, bye.